that's kind of unfair. Like I don't I don't want my in-laws to be in the position where they're buying me a lot of stuff and they're spending all of their money on things that I don't need and I don't want um, and I won't be keeping. That that's uh, crappy for them and crappy for for us as well and so i would just mention it and again if she then decides not to take it to heart if she ignores me and continues spending eight hundred dollars on clothes that i don't want to dress my kids in then that's kind of it she's a, she's an adult she can spend her money on whatever she wants but i think it's worth taking the time to talk to her about it and i don't think it's unhealthy and i don't think it needs to blow up welcome to mom alternative today is all about conflict resolution or how to fight in a way that actually solves problems we'll be talking about arguing in front of your kids accepting gifts that you do not want conflating business and marriage and finally disagreeing about how to deal with your in-laws all typical problems that will come up over the course of a marriage our first one is titled Conflict Resolution with Spouse in Front of Children. My husband and I don't tend to argue or disagree, and when we do, we're generally calm about it. No yelling, cursing, insults, etc. However, he's very adamant that we never show our kids when we are in an argument. He came from an abusive and neglectful household. His mother had been in and out of jail for drugs, meth his entire life, and got beaten in front of him by her boyfriends over the years. I told my sister about how much it upsets him if we argue or have a heated exchange in front of the kids and she said we should model what healthy conflict resolution looks like to our children my sister's ex came from a family that never fought or disagreed in front of him and he didn't know how to handle arguments how do you handle arguments with your spouse for the most part we're private about it but i think we model healthy conflict resolution and so i don't really care if our kids see it they're little though under two years old this is a really interesting topic because I think pretty much every single person out there will have an image of how their parents used to deal with fights. Um, my parents, for example, were very shouty. Um, so they would tend to shout at each other. They got very personal. And they did try to some extent to not argue too much in front of us, but both of them, like they, they just had a terrible temper. And so when their, when their tempers were, a, were aimed at each other, they couldn't really uh, stop themselves from, from having it out. That said, even if they did kind of succeed and not having the screaming, raging fight in front of us, it would always happen, you know, in their bedroom. And so everyone in the house would kind of hear it anyway. So it didn't really help. Now, I think that, generally speaking, a lot of people, myself included, tend to see the ways that their parents uh, deal with conflict and then you start emulating them, you start copying them just naturally. And that really, really sucks. So I also have a temper and uh, this aspect of like just shouting and raising your voice whenever you get angry is a really, really terrible one, something that I actually hate doing. And I don't think it's good for marriage. And, and so if I had to say does it matter how your parents fight in front of you? I would probably say yes to a large extent. Um, that said, I think that there is a difference. That like that there are a bunch of different there are a bunch of different parts to it. There is a difference between including or involving your kids in fights. So I do think that whether you try to model a healthy way of resolving conflicts in front of your children or not, assuming you know what a healthy way is and you can act that out, which uh, is pretty tough. Even if you manage to do that, I think that there is a huge difference between having a healthy conflict in front of your kids and involving your kids in it or talking about kind of adult topics, adult concerns in front of your children. I think that there is a part to this where you want to be a role model for the behavior that you want your kids to try to emulate in future, but um, kids should not be concerned about adult problems. And so, for example, if my finances are in really terrible shape and I'm having a fight with my husband about it, I wouldn't really want to fight that out with my kids because then I don't want them to be, to be worried about money. I think that if they're kids, that should not be something that they're concerned about. All that said, though, I don't think that you should lie or you should pretend. And so one of the problems that people run into is either you do this kind of silent treatment thing where you know that there's a problem but you don't want to fight in front of the kids and so you you just you don't say anything about it but kids can obviously feel that everyone is angry and that there's a problem going on and I think that that's a problem and the other option is that kids become you're kind of living a lie so kids assume you in front of them, you behave totally differently from how you behave behind closed doors with your spouse. And I think that that's not good either. So there needs to be some kind of healthy balance between, okay, we're going to fight it out. We're going to have a conversation about this. However, that ends up happening, even if emotions are fraught and we're going, but we're going to try to do that in a way that's good, but we're only going to do that about topics that are not so severe 
that our kids will take on our worry and stress and we need to be able to put a stop to it if we feel like we're getting a little bit too heated and therefore are not modeling a healthy way of dealing with conflict anyway. Um, and so I think that that's a very tough balance to to achieve, I guess, if you're if you're in the middle of a fight and you're trying to have an argument or you're trying to resolve it. So I think it's pretty it's pretty difficult. In general, the whole if you can even get to a point where you have fights in a in a healthy, productive, constructive way, then uh, it probably is a good <laughs> it probably is good to model that to your kids. I really wonder how many people actually achieve that though. Um, there was a really interesting interview from Jordan Peterson, I think, somewhere on his podcast. I'll see if I can find it, uh, where he makes the point that for a lot of kids, it's actually less fraught and less frightening if fights happen in the open versus being hidden behind closed doors because then, you know, their imaginations can go wild and um, they end up just having a lot more fear and a, and a lot more dread towards it than they would otherwise. And so if you never fight or disagree in front of your kids, then they also think, oh, okay, maybe maybe this, like, whatever whatever happens in the course of a fight is something that makes them deeply uncomfortable. They become non-confrontational. Non but then if you fight in front of them all the time, then they also think, oh, maybe this is what a normal relationship looks like, and then they internalize that. So in either direction, conflict is a really, really difficult thing to get right and to deal with in a healthy way. And obviously your kids will learn that from you. So I would I would try as much as possible to still have some fights in front of my kids, but not all of them. And I would always be very careful in terms of how I approach the the fight in this case, how I approach the argument and the things that I say um, from both sides. I think if, if my husband also said something that I was like, okay, you know what? I don't think that this is good. Uh, maybe we should we should stop here and continue at a different point. Then I think that that's, it's worth taking the time to do that. Now to see some comments from the others. One person says, yes, my husband's parents did the same. No fighting, arguing, resolving disagreements in front of children. And it severely impacted all the siblings on how to be confrontational, state your opinions, realize that disagreeing can be healthy and good. To this day, it has caused some of his siblings to be so non-confrontational, it's unhealthy and the inability to discuss things normally when there is an, a, a disagreement. As with most things, I think there is a balance. We want to show our daughter that confrontation is nothing to be scared of and that we can solve things without yelling, becoming heated or insulting. That said, if there is a chance that one of us needs to cool down, we won't discuss in front of her. That's pretty much what I said in terms of trying to find this, this the right balance uh, between having fights and not having fights but um <laughs> the the fact that so many people honestly i don't know how much of it is really caused by the parents if you say that some people are so non-confrontational that they cannot handle dealing with any kind of disagreement whatsoever i would probably challenge that and say maybe that is just their nature um obviously if every single sibling in a in a family is like that then probably it is nurture to a large extent as well but I think it, there's there's a spectrum of uh, how agreeable someone is. And if you're a very, very agreeable person, then it kind of also makes a bit of sense that you're going to be non-confrontational. And maybe that's not completely on your parents, but who knows, right? Uh, I think that some element of it will always be down to the nurturing aspect as well. Next person says, why would I need to argue with my husband in front of our kids for them to know how to handle arguments? Can't the disagreements we have with the kids themselves be enough of a model? And that's a good point. I think that could be the case if you actually manage, again, to deal with disagreements with your kids in a very different way from what I would consider to be kind of stereotypical parenting. Uh, kids don't really have the chance to win an argument, I think, in the majority of cases. Uh, so, for example, if they do something that you need to discipline them for and then they try to argue with you about it, then there's there's no there's no option there. Uh, you, just, you have to shut that down and you still need to discipline them for it. So... I think that that is, uh, it's much more difficult to my mind to try and model healthy conflict resolution with a child because a child will behave in ways that are irrational. I mean, obviously people do as well, but, but the difference is that when a child does it, then you as the adult in the situation need to place boundaries on their behavior and need to teach them and guide them so that they behave in a way that is considered socially acceptable. And so under those circumstances, it's really hard for the child to have a way out. That said, if kids get older uh, and you you try to you know sit down and have reasoned conversations with them and explain to them your point of view and they get to explain to you their points of view and uh, you agree and you apologize and so on, if you can do all of that with a child, then of course that would work better. Uh, I'm 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 just questioning how often that really 
can happen. One person does reply. She says, I've thought of this myself. I've heard this theory before about parents modeling how to resolve conflict by having fair arguments and resolving them in front of the kids. My husband and I don't really ever have big arguments, but if we have strong feelings about a disagreement, we don't tend to hash that out in front of the kids. I feel like it's unnecessary to involve children in adult problems, but maybe I'm wrong. So much of parenting is guesswork. And uh, one person replies to that particular comment, which I thought was uh, really poignant. She says, I feel like it's unnecessary to involve children in adults' problems. I firmly agree. Growing up, one of my many step parents would constantly vent to me, a child, about the argument and look to me to take sides. After the argument occurred loudly in front of me, I hated it. And that's obviously one of the things where you need boundaries with kids. Um, I kind of want to make a, a work comparison here, like in the same way that as uh, the manager, for example, you shouldn't hash out someone's private problems in front of a group of people and uh, I think that there is some element of that now obviously I'm not saying that you should treat your family like it's a professional setting but there is this idea that th there is a much stronger idea and a much more widely acceptable um, accepted idea that you should be professional and that there are boundaries on your behavior in different ways that are appropriate in terms of how you interact with your boss versus how you interact with a peer versus how you interact with someone who reports to you. And I think to some to some extent that can be conflated or compared uh, with parenting as well. How you interact with your husband should, like there should be a boundary there between how you interact with your husband and how you interact with your kids and how you interact with your husband in front of your kids. Another one here says, we have disagreements in front of our kids. We're calm, understanding, and make a point to listen. They don't always end with us agreeing on what we just didn't see eye to eye on, but they see us talk out talk out our standpoints and come to a middle ground. If it's one of the rare disagreements that's heated, we put a pin in it and handle it after they've gone to bed. I absolutely think working through things in front of your children is important. My parents never had disagreements. It was passive aggressive comments or my dad finally losing uh, his shit on my stepmom. There was never open communication and I had my fair share of therapy uh, because of it. Yeah, see, that's this perfect example. A lot of people just, uh, conflict is really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to manage. And honestly, passive aggressive uh, ways of dealing with conflict are probably some of the worst because they are you know, like I said, everyone knows, you know, that's why you call it passive aggressive. Everyone knows that you're actually being aggressive, uh, but you're, you're being passive aggressive about it. So you try and like hide it there and pretend that you're not actually picking a fight when you totally are. Next one is my dad yelled a lot and we saw my parents fight. I definitely came from a loud home, but not, ab not an abusive one. I'd love to say we've never raised our voices in front of the kids, but we have a handful of times. For the most part, our conflicts are calm. We always make sure to apologize in front of the kids if we've had a fight in front of them. I think it's important they see conflict and to an extent raise voices uh, to know what to do when it happens to them, such as saying, I won't be spoken to like this, walking away until you can calmly talk about what the issue is, apologizing and verbalizing your feelings, etc. We definitely don't want to fight in front of them and we try not to, but we're human. It's important that my kids know we're not infallible and what to do when you've made a mistake. I really like this one. I like especially the emphasis on the idea of making a mistake and how to respond to your kids um, under the circumstances where you do make a mistake. Uh, I, again, grew up in a household where that pretty much never happened. My parents almost never admitted to making any kind of mistake, irrespective of how they uh, treated each other, how they treated us. And I think that that gets, um, sometimes it's, it, there is this assumption that because you're a kid, it doesn't really matter if you get an apology. And I think that that's, uh, that's quite harmful and that's pretty evil. And one of the best skills that you can teach your kids is how to own up to their mistakes and, and be open about them. And so conflict resolution, um, I think if you're doing your best, honestly, and, and you're not actually either being passive aggressive or going crazy and screaming at each other, um, or calling each other names, which is also not great. Uh, anything in between those that uh, that is still reasonable and that can still be termed talking about the problem and actually trying to solve it in some kind of way is acceptable to do in front of kids. Again, depending on the topic. So, so long as the topic is also reasonable, then uh, go for it. I think it's a it's a good a good lesson for kids to learn. The next one. What's a nice way to tell my mother-in-law this? My mother-in-law is the queen of overspending money. 
She is constantly buying my kids clothes, but the problem is I really hate her style. She just bought my kids $800 worth of preppy boutique clothes from this online boutique and I hate everything she bought. It's so frilly and over the top preppy and if you knew me, this is literally the opposite of my style. I prefer neutral earthy colors for my kids and she buys frilly, puffy, monogrammed, hot pink and neon colored outfits for my girls. I know I probably sound ungrateful, but I'm just thinking it would be so nice if she would include me in the process of shopping for my kids. If you're going to spend close to a thousand dollars on a shopping spree for them, why not make sure it's stuff that I like and will actually dress them in, you know? My husband and I don't have much money, so it would be awesome if she would actually just donate the money to us to spend on our kids or at least ask me what I like. Sometimes I feel like she knows I hate the stuff she buys, but does it anyway because she wants me to dress them a certain way. How do I communicate this to her without being rude or ungrateful? She's so sensitive, so I have to tread carefully. Now, I know that there is a strong temptation to say, you know what, gifts are gifts. No one owes you anything. Um, you should be grateful. It's the thought that counts. So if someone gifts you something, then you should just take it and be like, hey, I'm, I'm really glad you thought of us. Thanks a lot. And then if you don't actually like it or if you want to get rid of it, then you can donate it or just sell it or whatever. Uh, pack it away and put it in your attic. How, however you want to deal with it, then you can do that. And I don't think that that's wrong. I think that there is some aspect of that that is right. In general, though, if I actually cared about my mother-in-law and I cared about the amount of money that she's spending, then I would probably say, look, I'm really grateful that you thought of us and I really appreciate you taking the time to order us cool clothes. Um, if you want to help us out, uh, there's, a lo there's a lot of ways that you could be helping us out and uh, there are other things that we need more than we needed the clothes. And so if you, if you want to spend that amount of money on something in future, then please uh, run it by us first or feel, feel free to run it by us first that we at least um, can ensure that you, you don't actually waste your money, that you spend your money on things that we're going to use. And I think that it's okay to have that conversation. I do agree and I do understand that people are sensitive and people might still take that to heart. Um, I think I would still say it's worth having a conversation about it. I don't think it's a fight and I don't think it needs to be an argument. And I don't think you need to go to her and say, hey, you know what, I hate your taste. Uh, I would never dress my kids in these colors. I want to dress them in something else instead. You could even say if she really likes this boutique that you could say something Something like you know it would be awesome if you gave us a uh, if you gave us a gift card for that boutique store and then we could pick out some items that uh, that you know our kids will actually like uh, and we'll be happy to dress them in you can make suggestions and just let her know but I think it's fine to say just FYI right so just just so you know and because I really don't want you to waste a ton of money and it seems like not just a waste from our side uh, like that we have to deal with the stuff but to me I would argue a lot more from the side of for her it's a giant waste of money uh, and that's that's kind of unfair like I don't I don't want my in-laws to be in the position where they're buying me a lot of stuff and they're spending all of their money on things that I don't need and I don't want um, and I won't be keeping that that's uh crappy for them and crappy for for us as well and so I would just mention it and again if she then decides not to take it to heart if she ignores me and continues spending $800 on clothes that I don't want to dress my kids in then that's kind of it she's a, she's an adult she can spend her money on whatever she wants but I think it's worth taking the time to talk to her about it and I don't think it's unhealthy and I don't think it needs to blow up some of the comments here uh, one person says, you don't get, like, there's no nice way to tell her this. Your financial issues have no relevance here. Gifts aren't about practicality or what you want. They're given by others as an act of love. You don't get to dictate those terms and maintain a healthy relationship. It sucks to get useless gifts. Sometimes things suck. You'd be completely out of line to tell another adult how to spend their money, so I would not cross that. Instead, I'd just be honest that the outfit is definitely her style, but not yours or practical, so it'll get little use. A thanks for the items, mother-in-law, but in all honesty, I'm afraid most of this won't be used since it's not practical and our style. Then sell the items to get some value back or donate and call it a day. Um, I actually think if someone gives you a gift and you're like, well, you know what, to be honest, I kind of hate this. That seems to me so much worse than saying, you know what, I really appreciate you buying this for us uh, in future if you want to spend money on other things, then there are other items that would be a lot more valuable for us that we would get more use out of. I think you could say that. I, I, I don't know. I guess to some people, you know, the, the point is that if you're honest, it, 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 there's nothing cruel about being honest and it's better to be direct and still mention it than to not be direct and to not say anything about it. But you know what? To me, to me, that sounds a little bit in the end, if it's a taste thing, then that's just her taste. 
you know, and and to be like, yeah, that's just these items are not practical. And we won't be dressing her in that. Seems seems a bit more harsh to me. That said, I have kind of not really rejected clothes from my from my in-laws but when my in-laws have bought us things where we're like okay you know what it's actually now coming up to the end of winter and they just bought us a jacket that's too big then we would say you know what <laughs> we're probably not going to get a chance to put them in this one because it's already it's, it's like the wrong it's the wrong season for it and the wrong the wrong size for the wrong season so that's not going to match up and I think it's okay to say that when it's like based on external factors but when it's just based on your individual taste and you're like well you know what I think that's ugly that seems a bit harsh to me. Uh, the next uh, one says, I would have tried to stop it by saying you just can't accept such expensive gifts. Say it makes you uncomfortable, maybe. And uh, OP replies, yes, I have done this so many times. I've literally begged her to stop spending money on my kids. She says it is her right as a grandma to buy them whatever she wants. And then that person replies, then I just have to put my foot down, flat out say, I'm not taking these and literally refuse to hold the item when she tries to force it on you, I'd say, no, we're done. There's no room. Keep it. Then as a last straw, if you leave it here, I'm throwing it away. You're right as a grandma. It's your right as a parent and homeowner to refuse. Now, I think that's pretty cruel as well. Uh, if she says it's her right to buy them whatever she wants, I'd be like, okay, cool. And I would probably take the items and then I would get rid of them. I would find like some some nice place to donate them or some easy convenient way that I don't have to store them because I don't want to store items that I'm never going to use and that would be it if she's she's been direct about it and she said I've, I've begged her to stop spending money and she's chosen not to then again she's a grown adult woman she can decide to spend her money on whatever she wants um I think saying I'm not going to touch this is a little bit over the top uh you don't you don't need to be quite that extreme about it and <laughs> it's kind of ironic to me that people give her advice like this when she's like I don't want to be rude or ungrateful and my mother-in-law is really sensitive so if your mother-in-law is really sensitive don't treat the gifts that she buys you as if they're radioactive that's probably not good um but in general being direct and being open and coming at it from this position of care and consideration and not being like oh it's my mother-in-law and she's buying me things but actually being like you know what I actually care about my mother-in-law and I don't want her to waste her money or her time or her effort on uh, on things that I'm not going to use and that our kids aren't going to use then we are just going to try to direct her in the right way and if she doesn't like it then that's it then that's that's all you can do the next one, every time things get tough, my husband points the finger at me. I'm sorry to vent, but I'm so upset at my husband. He's very chill and is normally nice and I'm very happy with how good of a dad he is. He splits duties evenly, etc. But every single time a tough situation comes up, he likes to play, play the blame game and it's always my fault. We have a business together. It's based off his trade, but I do the books and all the marketing, website, etc. We've had a couple of good years and a strong start, but lately it's been dead. Materials are high in price and people aren't saying yes to the estimates in turn his job has been super slow business isn't seeing as much money and i'm doing all i can to stretch the marketing dollars i have my own job that i never let go of it used to be mostly for savings and some for fun but now i'm paying a lot of the bills with mine which is okay but budget gets tight I need income from him too. He's too chill about it all and just hoping he gets some calls and these estimates turn into yes. It's been months of slowness. Side note, during this slow time, I have asked him to learn how to send the estimates himself. Right now, he does it so old school and jots prices down and has me put together the estimate and email them to the potential customer. I know damn well he's smart enough to do better and do it himself. He's just trying to keep me doing it like I always have. Difference is that now I picked up more hours at my separate job. Since I picked up more hours, I'm spending less time on marketing for the business we share. Today, I had the discussion with him that some changes need to be made here. I told him we cannot financially keep going like this for long where he's just waiting for the business to pick up i suggested that he get a job to supplement for the slowdown of the business he refuses instead he said i need to try harder and i was taken aback like wtf i have always had a job in addition to our business it's like every single time we get into a tough situation he tries to put it on me how is it my fault I tried not to say hurtful things in stressful moments because you can't take it back, but I'm so hurt by what he said. It's making me lose some respect for him because I'm so turned off when people aren't accountable for their own actions. He hasn't said anything rude like that since our first child was born when he said that I don't do anything. It's so rude and I just need to vent. Maybe read some feedback about what he said, but what he said is so ridiculous. Sure, he might be stressed, but that doesn't give him the okay to talk to me like that and put the blame on me. What are your thoughts? Given the basic info, how should I bring it up? 
job so we don't spiral out of control and make the tension worse. I did my best to uh, get a job as nicely as possible, not sure what else I can do. I feel so stressed and I need some outside perspective because I'm irritated and I don't want to say something to him that I regret, even though he did to me. Now, this is one of those situations where I would say uh, every time you are working together as a married couple on anything, especially on a business, then you kind of open obviously a pretty wide door to conflicts because of the business or because of your finances or because of whatever, like working together on something. Your relationship has a lot more complexity added to it because you're no longer just husband and wife. You're also business partners or your employer employee. And that is a very, very different dynamic to kind of add on top of an already existing one and, and, and an already existing marriage. So it's pretty difficult. I think from my perspective, I think that OP took it a little bit too personally here when he says that she needs to try harder. Uh, I get her point in terms of saying, look, I'm doing all of this work and I'm, I'm paying all the bills. I would say that she took the point that he was making as a personal attack on the amount that she's doing and what she's contributing to the household. Whereas he probably meant it, I would assume if she's responsible for marketing, he probably meant it from the business side of things that as the person responsible for marketing, you're responsible for bringing more clients in. I think that they are just talking on totally different levels. And so what she heard was not actually what he what he meant to say. And obviously he didn't say it in a way that's uh, that's reasonable either. Fundamentally, if it is his business, it is his responsibility to bring clients on board as well. But I guess then the complication is how are you actually splitting duties up between the two of you? All that said, I would argue that probably he's not into the idea of getting a job because I think I would assume that that means you're giving up on the business or there is some realistic realization there that if you get a job, then you're going to have way less time to invest in the business. And that's not actually what you want to do when the business is struggling. If you scale back when the business is really struggling, then you're kind of giving up. Then there's no... you. There's no opportunity for you to invest enough that you can get it up and running again and make it successful. Generally speaking, if things are unsuccessful, that's also uh, that's also a time that you need to kind of invest more. Generally, that said, uh, the fact that you know again he's worried about the business, she's worried about the household and their finances, and so what you need to do is you need to try and separate. Okay. Uh, oh, if you can even separate, but you can, you need to at least try and structure the conversations. And on the one hand, you need to look at the business and look at the problems that the business is facing and brainstorm solutions around that. And then on the other hand, you need to look at your finances as a household and to look at your income and look at your expenditures and look at your bills and look at your savings and then decide, okay, what are, how are our finances doing? How much money do we actually need? What is the prospect or how, what's the long-term prospect of the business? Will we be able to bring money in? If we're not, what will we do and make plans for that? And so to have these two conversations on separate levels, uh, I think would make a really, really big difference. And the goal is then to try and approach them both from the perspective of we're a team, we're working on this together, we're going to try and find a solution together. We are uh, in this for the long haul, we want to make the business work, but we also need to feel good about our house and our finances and to be able to pay for our bills and afford food, because obviously these are all things that are essential. And then I think if you can both brainstorm solutions together and then you can agree on what you would consider to be the turning point. So for example, if it's been six months and the business still isn't going anywhere and you've already tried everything that you want to try, at what point do you say, all right, we need to cut it here and focus our energy elsewhere. And then I think you can kind of uh, deal with the conflict in, in, in some way. That said, it's just, this is one of those situations where it's just a difficult, just a difficult problem to handle. It's not an easy problem to handle. It's not one of those arguments like, yes, it's definitely the case that both people, both parties will probably say things that are hurtful or things that, um, that you know, are taken in the wrong way or it might devolve into a screaming, raging fight. And that's not good either. But this is one of those points where you have so many, so many different strands involved and so many different worries and different concerns involved all at the same time that it's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to untangle it all and be able to sit down and have like a, a reasonable, rational adult, um, as emotion-free as possible type of conversation about it. 
You can see some of the comments. People here have a lot of experience with this. One person says, you say that he's not busy with work. So what is he doing all day? I would lay out your household and business financials, a normal month versus what it's been lately and make sure that the income from your extra hours is itemized. It should become really obvious that something needs to change. Highlight that you're putting X extra hours in to bring, to bring in this much money, but it's not enough to fill the gap. Meanwhile, his hours are down. Have him brainstorm solutions of what to do with the extra time to help out, whether that's work in the business or outside of it. People are always more brought into things that they come up with themselves. Um, and yeah, that kind of uh, takes some of the elements of what I said, but I think it's this fundamental idea of you, know, you need to deal with your finances and then you need to deal with your business and they're actually two separate problems. Even if one is causing the other, but they're still separate problems to solve. One person here says, my husband started his full-fledged business in 2016 and the family dynamics were exactly as you describe. My two cents based on the experience, for your husband to start a job now, even if it's part-time or only to fill the gap, would be equivalent to him admitting defeat and accepting that his business failed. That's how it appeared to my husband when he met initial challenges and converting orders and going back to the job looked like an easy way out. But easy never equals success. Businesses are not built in a day and there will be peaks and valleys. So my suggestion would be not to suggest that he picks a job, rather make him answer the question as to how business can pick up so finances ease and your workload can be lessened as you have picked up a second job. And then uh, this person kind of goes into, into more depth. But I really like this point of, okay, if what he heard was we're giving up on the business and then he reacts very defensively to that, then, um, then fair enough to some extent obviously again defensiveness is not the best way to deal with uh, to deal with conflict but so long as OP realizes that that's how he heard what she said as a suggestion and she's obviously way more on the practical side of things where she's like I'm really worried about our finances and I'm managing all of our bills and I don't have time for this um, and we need to change things up and he's kind of like really attached to the business and trying to make that work so I totally understand where OP is coming from and I still to uh, to a large extent also understand where her husband is coming from. This is one of those risks that you take, that you accept when you decide to try and build, both build a business but also build a business together with your spouse. And so uh, it's tough. I hope that they manage to sit down and, and figure it out and I think... To a large extent, um, all businesses go through these ups and downs. And so maybe they'll be one of the lucky people who managed to make it out of the down as well. The final one is titled Baby Any Day Now and uh, My Husband Drops a Bomb. I am so stunned by my husband. I'm over 38 weeks pregnant, so I can go into labor any day. Earlier in the week, my mother-in-law had offered to come help by spending time with our toddler so we can be alone with the newborn. Also, it was the first time she even asked how my pregnancy is going and will just leave her mess for me to clean up so she can play with my toddler. So I politely declined. She is the mother-in-law constantly trying to take on the mother role and disrespecting my or our boundaries. Like I swear every time we see her, I have to tell her we don't do screen time because she will sneak my son away to her room and put on a show on her iPad for him when there is literally no reason for, for it or give him water out of her cup or feed him food off her plate with her utensils or fingers when he has his own plate in front of him and can use his own cutlery. Then when I tell her not to share germs because cold, flu, RSV, common sense, she gets huffy with me and goes on a tangent about how we are the ones exposing her to more germs. They might be small boundaries, but I'm just exhausted having to fight them every freaking time and endure her passive aggressive and overbearing ways. Now my husband and I had agreed to hold off on them visiting when we have our second baby and play it by ear. My husband has two weeks off, so they would come sometime within that time frame, but I wanted some time to adjust first. I made him read the lemon plot essay and he acted like it was an over-exaggeration but I stood firm and he agreed initially. Well, last night my husband got home from work and was just pissy. He said nothing was wrong, but as soon as my baby went to bed, one of our biggest fights happened. We don't really fight, we discuss, and discussions are almost solely about his parents. But this felt like a fight. Anyway, he came in with an attitude and told me that he thought about it and he wants his parents to be at our place when we get home from the hospital so they can see the toddler meet the baby. He said they can stay in a hotel, but he basically thinks I'm being selfish for not wanting his parents there and how it isn't fair that my parents will get to meet the baby right away. They'll be looking after the toddler because they live locally. 
He went on about how he is tired of me always getting upset and not wanting to spend time with his parents and that he resents me for not letting him see his parents more, which is 100% inaccurate. I complain and I don't like when they make plans to come see us with 24 hours notice, but I let it happen if we don't have other plans. I told him it wouldn't be such an issue and I wouldn't have to complain if he backed me up when it comes to his mom's boundary stomping. He played dumb and like he always does, but in reality, he lets me fight all the battles and pretends. Or is just that freaking blind that he doesn't see or hear the things when they happen. For more info, I think one of my last posts was was called, I got a shiny new spine for Christmas. He even said, I know she doesn't have a single healthy relationship in her life and she's a toxic person, but she's my mom. And it isn't fair for you to keep my parents from big moments that your parents get to be a part of. It got ugly. It was a lot of back and forth and how I don't care about what he wants and vice versa. And he more or less said that I need to compromise on this one. Then he stumped away and we haven't spoken since. My pregnancy insomnia is really bad right now. So I think I managed three and a half hours of sleep last night in between crying and trying to get my horrible headache to go away. I'm really struggling right now and feel so hurt by all the things he said and his clear disregard for my own happiness. His mom takes over and in videos of all big moments in our toddler's life, she is the center of attention. I just feel like her being at my house when we bring the baby home will ruin that memory for me because videos will be of her squealing and getting in my toddler's face. For his birthday, she pulled his chair right next to hers and blew out his candle and I had to make her move just so I could sit on one side of my kid to help him open presents. Otherwise, I would have had to sit on the floor at eight months pregnant or on the other side of her. They might be little things, but they piss me off to no end because to me she is so purposeful with her behavior trying to exclude me the mom but nobody calls her out on it and I constantly feel like I'm on eggshells and having to choose when to be the bad guy and when to let things slide I just don't want that for one of the biggest moments in my life I don't know though am I wrong do I need to compromise and give my husband what he wants I don't want to look back and watch videos and just hear her screeching or talking about herself I want the moment to be calm and peaceful and beautiful and if they do come to town they would probably stay a few days so would want to visit every day usually they stay at our place but have got a hotel in the past and we're literally here from breakfast until our toddler's bedtime I told my husband maybe they could come but it would be two hours maximum and while he agreed I told him I expected him to enforce that and he just got silent and started arguing about how it isn't fair that my parents get to spend more time with our toddler. So I really don't trust him to enforce this kind of thing. Also, side note, I told my husband back in November after another squabble about his parents that we should do couples counseling because we don't ever seem to see eye to eye on the issues and he shot it down. Now counselors in my area that are accepting new clients have a six to eight week wait and I need help basically right this second. So don't bother with that suggestion. Now there is an update. Um, I'll get to the update in a second. To deal with the primary issue here, it is unfair to have different standards for one side of the family than for the other. So I actually do kind of get where the husband is coming from here. And when he says, it's not really fair that you're okay with your parents being there, but then you're not okay with my parents being there. I would also be like, yeah, okay, I I see where he's coming from. That said, what OP seems to not, I guess not not quite grasp or what her husband uh, largely doesn't grasp at all uh, in terms of how she talks to him, fundamentally as the son, considering the mother-in-law here is his mother, he should be the one to enforce boundaries that they agree on as a couple. Now, I'm not saying that the mother can't do that as well, that OP can't do that as well. Obviously, she's trying to do that as well. But if you agree as a couple that you have this boundary, then he should be 100% behind her. If he agrees and he admits himself that his mother is very toxic, uh, and I think if I find it, he says, She doesn't have a single healthy relationship in her life. If that is how he feels about his mother, then he should be 150% on OP's side when it comes to setting boundaries. Now, that said, I think most of the boundaries that she talked about there are quite minor. Like, I I don't think they're a big deal. Um, I totally understand why you would be annoyed if you feel like you're being edged out of your uh, of your toddler's life and I think that to a large extent I would expect my husband to step in especially if she's like eight months pregnant I honestly can't imagine this being eight months pregnant and having my in-laws sitting there and and like being totally happy to sit and play and then if I just 
acted as if I wanted to sit next to my kid, I'm 150% sure they would immediately get up and, and, and let me sit. So I get, I get why she's annoyed. Um, this is fundamentally a problem between the couple. And she calls it, he's, he dropped a bomb, but I think that he called her out on something that's quite fair. And then he's not accepting to a very large degree, how his behavior is contributing to the problem instead of helping. Now, what he could say is, I know, I know that my mom can be really annoying to deal with. And yes, she can be pretty toxic and I'm going to be on your side and we're going to figure this out and we're going to, we're going to handle it together. But then the trade-off, kind of what I expect from you in return, is that my parents get treated the same as your parents as much as possible. Yeah. And then it's pretty simple and it's not that complicated. I feel really bad for OP that they kind of had this uh, screaming, raging fight about it. And this idea of her feeling like she's talking on eggshells. Um, she she spent ages uh, crying at night. She has a headache. She's pregnant. She's really sad and really emotional. And they squabble all the time. I think all of that is unfortunate and very sad. I think kind of the worst thing is when she says, okay, maybe they could come for two hours and she's kind of trying to compromise with him. But then she says, you're the person that shouldn't force that. And... Uh, then he he got annoyed by it i think that there the problem really is to understand what are the things that you actually perceive to be boundaries together and if he thinks it's unfair for them to stay for two hours and you can't expect him to enforce that uh if you actually agree on something together where you go okay you know what? this is what i need what i need is space and peace and i want this moment to be calm and something that i'm going to look forward to and enjoy and if we're going to film it then i want to be able to watch those videos afterwards and feel good about them which means i don't want your mum to be in the center of every shot and then he goes all right this is how i can help you make that happen and suddenly the whole argument is very very different uh, I think that a big part of these problems is always how you approach these conversations. And if you put one spouse, um, one partner in this position where they feel like they are hard done by, they feel like their side of the family isn't appreciated, um, or they feel like they don't get a say in moments that are actually quite important and major for them as well, then uh, obviously it ends up in a much larger conflict. Now, to read the update, she says, thank you all for your insights and opinions. I realized I'm not wrong for wanting the moment to be intimate, but could compromise in some way. I especially appreciated people's experiences and those that said they regretted having people attend the meeting of siblings as it helped me be more decisive and realized I would 100% re regret having his family there, but would never regret it just being the four of us. My husband and I talked for hours last night and I feel like we made great progress. We have ultimately decided to compromise by having my parents meet the baby and toddler at a later time as well so that the siblings meeting can be an intimate moment as a nuclear family my husband has no issue with my parents and originally was fine if they were there but he said that if his parents can't be there then neither should mine it's not an argument worth my marriage, quite frankly, so I will have that awkward conversation with them later. I would much rather have it be the nuclear family than a big spectacle with his mother, so it's sort of a compromise. While he isn't admitting it, I think mother-in-law has sufficiently guilted him as his perspective was all about how his parents don't have the same opportunities to see her as mine, and this is a big opportunity that he could give them. He also didn't see it as being such a big deal for this moment to be shared with a bunch of others. Unfortunately, I think this is what a lifetime of manipulation and favoritism from a parent does to a child and so his decisions about prioritizing them occur on a somewhat subnoxious level uh, sorry subconscious subnoxious <laughs> subconscious level he knows how toxic she can be but still is trying to earn her love by giving her these opportunities almost as gifts and less than the ammunition of being made to feel guilty for them missing out he would never say it like that i'm not sure he even realizes it but when i asked for his for his perspective and how he wanted the moment to go it was all about them instead of i whereas my wishes were about me and the best interest um, of my child and myself in his defense my my first postpartum experience was a dreamy one in which my recovery was fast and mainly pain-free. So I think that's what he envisioned I would be like this time around. So no big deal if people come over for an hour or two. He also has a very stressful job and is stressed about having a newborn again. Truthfully, I think he had his own level of postpartum depression with our first and likely is worried that will happen again. So while his timing sucks and I'm still hurt by it, I can see how his eruption was really just that. Moving forward, I do want to pursue couples counseling as it pertains to his mother. I am worried though that my husband won't be able to handle a lot of the truths he quite frankly ignores or represses when it comes to the hard facts about how his narcissistic mother actually treats him and others. He has spent a lifetime letting things go 
goal and pretending they didn't happen or making up excuses all modeled and encouraged quite frankly by my father-in-law changing that will be difficult now i appreciate that they managed to come up with a compromise that works for them and i actually do also appreciate that the compromise is let's exclude both both parents and have a moment as a nuclear family instead i think this is cool this is how i would want to do it as well um what i kind of really hate a little bit about op and where i think she's really shooting herself in the foot is this desire to try and change her husband's narrative about his relationship with his mother or with his dad or within his family and i think that this is one of those moments where yeah you have a say in this in as much as his relationship with his parents impacts your family and impacts how you interact with them and so of course if they if he's unable to enforce boundaries and you have problems with how they treat you or how they talk to you or how they act then this is something that you need to deal with and you need to agree on that but anything beyond that in terms of how he cares about them whether he puts their needs before his own i don't think that it is right or healthy for the wife in a married couple to try and convince her husband that his parents are narcissistic are abusive are manipulative um and so on i think if you come at it from this angle then you take away a lot of agency from that person themselves and you completely disregard his perspective as the person who's actually experiencing it and going through it and yes of course people who are experiencing manipulation and these things have blinders on then maybe they have blind spots there's always value in having an external perspective but trying to force it on him and then saying well, i want us to do counseling in order to change his mind about this i think that that's not going to work out i think that's going to go pretty 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 badly um i understand the urge and i understand the need and of course there are aspects of this relationship that may be super unhealthy and there is a certain amount of putting other people's concerns before yours that will be unhealthy for you and especially for your family but again your focus from the wife side of the equation as far as i'm concerned obviously this is my opinion your focus from the wife part of the equation is to consider your family and how things influence your family and the, the things that you want. It should not be to try to change his relationship with his parents. I think that's quite dodgy. Um, and I say this as someone who, like I have a pretty good relationship with my in-laws, but not a great relationship with my parents. And so my, my husband does not have a great relationship with my parents either and maybe it's this aspect of how you switch of, of just switching things around but generally speaking when you are the person who is the uh, the face of that like when you're dealing with parents like that all day every day then um then it's very frustrating to have other people try to diminish your perspective or to try to convince you that you're an abuse victim if you feel like you're not for example um that's that's not healthy for your marriage either that will definitely be taking an argument and making a much much bigger deal out of it now, what's really interesting about all of these concerns, all of these problems that come up from in-laws and dealing with in-laws is that they, in my opinion, highlight the cracks in your own marriage and in your relationship with each other. And so the question is always, how do you manage these types of conflicts together? And how do you perceive your family as its own separate unit that you need to protect, separate from your extended family, separate from your parents and his parents? That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to like the video, leave a comment down below and subscribe for future content. I will see you in the next one.